that would Excited for the game Saturday, obviously it's a big game. First time in program history that college game day is here for Alabama basketball. So the programs come the ways that, that they want to come here for a game and it's you know, it's obviously not the SEC championship, but it's gonna go a long ways in determining who the SEC champion is in the regular season. So expect to have Great crowd, expect to have a great crowd for college game day. The crowd's been amazing this year. It should be a great environment. But I will say this, we want to make sure that we're being respectful and considerate of our language and signs and everything for college game day and during the game. It's going to be a fun Saturday morning, fun Saturday night. We're going to have a ton of fun. Let's just try to remind fans to be mindful of our language. Uh, during both events, the uh, college game day and the game at night, just to represent the uh, University of Alabama and the state of Alabama, like, like it should be represented. So, But to get to the game, I mean, Tennessee's tied with them in first place. They're one of the best, they're the highest rated team in our league. Right now, you know, they handle us pretty well at their place, so we're fortunate to be in a tie with them for first place with the way that they beat us at their place. So we've got to do things significantly better than the first time we played them. Number one being our turnovers, we're going to have to handle their physicality a lot better, take care of the ball a lot better. And, and you know, obviously our defense has been a little bit of an issue all year. It's going to have to be great. Dalton connects, you know, leading the score in the league. It's the only player I uh, believe in Division One this year at least. Scored 35 more points four times, which it's sure. I mean, he's uh, he's scoring the ball at a high level. Like, I think it's the first time since 2019, 2020 that anybody in Power Six basketball has done that. Scored 35 points or more four times in a year. So, you know, his last game out, kind of single handedly took the game over. You know, in the second part of the second half gets Auburn and willed him. To win after all we're having down. So we, we got to be aware of him, but you know, they, they, they've got a really good team. Ziegler leads the league in assists. So, you know, you put too much attention on Connect and you open the four up for Ziegler. You know, a dude has been very good inside, then you pay too much attention to Connect and all of a sudden the dude starts hurting you. So it's not like this is a one man band. They, Vescovy's been one of the best guards in this league for a long time. They just, Took a, a very good team, one of the best teams in the league, added the leading score in the league to it and connect, and now they've got a team that's, you know, primed to get a, a one or a two seed, and I'm sure anything short of a final four on they'd be disappointed with the end of the year. So, so it's a really good team we got coming here with the SEC league title on the line. Start with Charlie on the right. Yeah, I just wanted to see if you had an update on, on the trail and how he's been. Yeah, so obviously with the head injuries, you can't rush it. He's going through workouts. You got it's really day to day based on uh, meetings with Clark, our trainer, Dr. Bittner, and Dr. Neurologist. And I they say he's doing really well and he's getting much better, but it's not something a coach can. Just, when he can play, they're going to let me know he can play. So I don't, I don't have an answer yet on that, but hopefully it's here pretty quick. Nick? Yeah, in what ways do you see this Tennessee team at all different or ways they've improved since you last played them uh, back in January? Yeah, I mean, Connects had some really big games since then. Uh, I think they're, they're playing pretty fast, good transition. I mean, this is a team that it's always been great defensively under Coach Barnes and offensively they've gotten really good. And their the last 11 wins, I think they scored 80 plus points in nine of them. You go back to last year, thinking the last 11 wins of the year. Last year they scored 80 or more in one of them. So it's a team whose offense has gotten extremely good to go with a, an elite level defense. And now that's why teams are probably rightfully so talking about Final Four runs for this team because they're that good on both sides of the ball. Tony. I 
meant to ask this earlier this week, but have you ever been in a, in a court storming, and what, how do you think that those should be uh, disciplined? That's a good question. I uh, We don't storm the court here. We expect to win big games. We won a lot of big games here. I actually love the fact that our fans are unbelievably great and give us a great environment during the game and then act like we've been there and done that uh, after we beat um, beat plenty of good teams in this building since I've been here. So I, I like the way it's been here. Um, when I was at Buffalo, when we were ranked 14th in the country, playing the Mac, you know, there was top 25 team. You don't get very many home games against the top 25 team in the Mac. So we had some court storms there. And, so we were involved with one last year when we were number one in the country at a and So uh, what we did at a and last year is, you know, the, the league title had already been determined. So we had already won the league. We went there. Not, uh, we were trying to win. It's not like we gave them a win. We, but we let their staff know that if they, if, you know, if they end up winning the game, which is what happened, if they end up winning, that we, we were not going to stick around and shake hands, that we were getting off the court immediately which is what happened. So we got everybody out as the buzzer was sounded and avoided any issues with the court storming. I, I mean, I'll say this, like college sports is different than professional sports. The court storming, you know, is something that's kind of lined up just with colleges. It, 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 players are getting hurt in it. They didn't do something about it. So whether it's you know, somehow eliminated, and I, we've done a great job here. From never storming the court, like I said, though. Like really. Alabama sports in general expects to win big games. Football's won a bunch of national championships. They had five or six different sports that won national championships. So they, like we expect to win around here. Some other places that winning a big game doesn't happen very often. They feel like they need to celebrate. Like, like if, if you know what's coming get the kids off the court, the, the handshake line at the end, it's not disrespectful in my opinion if you let them know before. I mean, I let, we let Coach Williams know before that we weren't going to shake hands if, if they ended up winning the game just to avoid any kind of situations like what happened last week. Chase. When you look back at tape of the Tennessee loss in Knoxville, did that loss trace back to defense or was it a lot more, you know, involved in that? It was, uh, defense was, Probably number one problem. Our turnovers on offense were probably equally as big of a problem. And, and when you turn the ball over 22 times and you're feeding their transition off your turnovers and your defense isn't that good to begin with, now you got a real problem because you're not going against your set defense enough because you're turning it over. Your set defense isn't good enough when they are going against it. And then when your defense isn't good enough, you're not getting on transition. So you're not getting easy buckets and it just becomes cyclical, like you don't get stops, you're always taking it out of the net, they have their defense set, they're super physical, they're into you, they're turning you over, they're getting easy buckets. Now we're going against a set defense all night, they're going, and it just, it got very cyclical in a downward fashion and it wasn't good. We, we've got to establish, A, we're going to take care of the ball. We get our defense set, we need more stops. If we can get stops and get out in transition and we're going against them when their defense isn't set, you know, we're, we're a lot better off. So it's a combination of a lot, but the turnovers and just the defensive focus, intensity, physicality, that it wasn't there the first time. Kurt, or Sutton, Sutton, I'm sorry. Hey, Coach, in your first game against Tennessee, AD has scored 19. Uh, and then the top, last game against Auburn, the front court was struggling a little bit defensively. Have y'all done maybe anything different defensively for the front court for this game? Or how do you yeah, see that I mean, playing we out? talked a little bit more about it what we're going to have to do. I mean, Pringles, I think Pringles has been really good here lately. I think he's going to be a little more primed and ready for the game. I think, you know, some of our younger kids have grown up a little more. It, it, I told our freshmen it's March now. We don't need you to be acting like freshmen. You look a lot more like sophomores. You play a whole season of basketball and got a lot of reps. So hopefully Jaron Mokiabate will be a lot better for us, but, you know, uh, front court guys just got to be a little tougher. They, they got ducked in all night. And the dude's big and he's good, but we, we got to make it a little harder and our guards got to do a little better job 
not letting the cars get so deep and made it easy to just drop the ball in like they did last time either. But yeah, we talked about possible traps, you know, we trapped from the baseline from the top. We've done it different ways this year. I mean, we played some of the best base in the country with back in the non-conference. We went three straight games where we had Edie and uh, Cog Printer and then Paolo uh, from Arizona. So we've worked on some traps and we've revisited some of that stuff we've done back then. Last one, Kurt. I'm just curious on uh, Latrell. Uh, while he's been in this concussion protocol, if he can do conditioning work or do any kind of practice work? Yeah, he's been doing that. So, so you have to, they've got a whole process that I don't know exactly how it all goes. The trainer handles that with the team doctor. But yes, he's back doing basketball workouts and conditioning and all that. And they say it's going really well, so it should be any day here. He's able to play games. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, right, everyone. Thanks.